Hello friends welcome to Electronic Spot. On this occasion, we will use a 38-pin ESP32 development board, which we will place on a small 400-point breadboard. We will use an OLED display module, with a resolution of 128 by 64 pixels, which we will connect to the development board. With our Arduino development environment, we will learn to configure a real-time clock or RTC, internally on our ESP32 board, synchronizing this clock with an NTP server, and using the network time protocol, to obtain the exact time stamp, according to our time zone on Earth. Accurately displaying on the OLED screen, the day of the week, the date in year, month and day, and the time in hours, minutes, and seconds. And of course, we will learn to individually extract the parameters of this time structure, to exercise control over the elements of our board according to time, in this case a red LED, timing its on and off, according to a specific time of the day. Welcome friends. The objective is the following. By powering up the ESP32 board, it will be connected wirelessly to the Wi-Fi network of our location, with the security credentials of the router at this location. Once the connection is achieved, a request will be made over the internet to an NTP server, located at the URL pool.ntp.org, which will respond to the ESP32 board using the NTP protocol, or network time protocol, and will provide the exact date and time. Once this time stamp is obtained, the ESP32 board will be disconnected from the Wi-Fi network, and this time will serve as a starting point for the internal clock of the ESP32 board, which will begin to run from said initial time. Clock with which we can time the turning on and off of the LED, according to our requirements. To achieve the objective, having the ESP32 board connected to our computer, we open the Arduino software. I leave this code in a link in the description, download it and open it with your Arduino software. Code you should edit according to your needs as follows. If you do not have an OLED screen connected, you can comment this line of code, so as not to use its functions within the execution of the program, in my case I will leave it uncommented since I will perform the exercise with the screen. If you have the screen connected, edit the width of the screen in pixels, in my case 128. Edit the height of the screen in pixels, in my case 64. And edit the I2C address of the OLED screen, generally these types of screens are configured at the factory with the hexadecimal address 3C. Below. Edit the ESP32 pin where the SDA pin of the screen is connected, remember that, unlike a basic Arduino board, such as the Uno R3, where the two pins of the I2C interface are that is, SDA and SCL, they are defined by hardware, that is, their location cannot be modified by the user. On the ESP32 board, the digital pins go through a multiplexing module, that is, you as a user choose the pins you are going to use so that they fulfill the SDA and SCL function. According to my connections, the SDA pin corresponds to pin 27, and the SCL pin corresponds to pin 14 of the ESP32. Then select the ESP32 pin that powers the VDD pin of the OLED display module, in my case pin number 12. Below, you must enter the identifier of your Wi-Fi network or SSID, I will enter the one that corresponds to me. And you must enter the password with which you enter said network, I will enter the one that corresponds to me. The NTP server should be left as it is. On the line below, you must enter the offset or compensation in seconds, which corresponds to your time zone with respect to the Greenwich Meridian. For example, if I search on Google, the time zone corresponding to my location in Colombia. You can see that I am in a time zone in GMT-5, the number 5 is expressed in hours, so, if 1 hour is equivalent to 3600 seconds, 5 hours would be equivalent to 18,000 seconds. Then in Tools. Board. ESP32, we select the one corresponding to the ESP32 dev module, and we go to Tools. Port. And select the COM port where the board is identified. Then we load what we have carried up to the moment of the program, on the ESP32 board. If this is your case, remember that once you see this message, connecting, you must press the boot button, or start button, for a couple of seconds. This will start loading the program on the board. Once the program has finished loading, 
we open the serial monitor of our Arduino software. And now we can continuously see the day of the week, date and time data of our time info structure. Illustrated in the format, in which we have it programmed in our Arduino code, inside the print local time method. If we present them one in front of the other, we realize the correspondence of each time element, within the chosen format. Just to do an analysis of the moment when our ESP32 board starts, I am going to reset the board with the reset button. And I'm going to momentarily freeze what we're seeing on the serial monitor. When starting the program on our board, we can see that the first step is to connect to our Wi-Fi network. If you succeed, the second step is to obtain the time structure on our server located on the internet, at the pool.ntp.org URL. If you get the time structure, the third step is to disconnect from the Wi-Fi network. After disconnecting from the Wi-Fi network, therefore, from the internet, we still continue to see the time structure or our clock. This means that, if the ESP32 board's Wi-Fi connection is lost, or its connection to the NTP server on the internet for any reason, despite this, our time structure will continue to run continuously with the internal clock or RTC of the ESP32 until our ESP32 board electrically boots again, and starts getting a new time synchronization with the NTP server. Having explained this, if you have an OLED screen connected, by now you should be able to see the clock data updating second by second. Now, let's get to what for me is the most important thing about having an RTC, or a real-time clock, how do we use it to control? Well, for this we are going to connect a red LED diode, between pins 26 and 25 of the ESP32 board, with the anode or positive of the LED to pin 26 of the ESP32, and with the cathode or negative to pin 25. The idea is to program this LED to turn on at a specific time of day, and turn off a minute later. To do this, let's locate the void loop method, a cyclic method that is the backbone of our program logic. Here we can visualize the call of the method that illustrates the clock on the OLED screen, and the call of the method that illustrates the clock on the serial monitor, functions of which, we have already seen their results. Now we are going to program the LED function. So the next step, after displaying the clock on the different monitors, is to obtain and process the time variables in our code. We know that, in the initial part of the Arduino code, we declare a time info structure, and that in this the clock data structure is stored. So we can search on Google, time info structure, we enter the first link of c++.com, and here we have the components of a time info structure, where we can see all the members that make up this structure, which in their entirety it is numerical, it returns integers, and where I am going to obtain the first three in my Arduino code, hours, minutes, and seconds. So, I will carry out the LED timing in two ways, you can choose the one that best suits you when programming your board. For the first way. In my Arduino code I will get. The hours of the time info structure. The minutes of the time info structure. And the seconds of the time info structure. In this case I want to turn on the LED at 13 hours and 5 minutes, and turn it off 1 minute later. Observe the current time shown on the screen so we have a few minutes to complete the code until 13 hours and 5 minutes are up and see the result of it. For which I will create two control structures of type if, one inside the other. The condition of the first structure is, if the variable hours is equal to 13, and the condition of the second structure is, if the variable minutes is equal to 5. If the two conditions are met, the action will be to turn on the LED, turn on the anode and turn off the cathode. If the conditions are not met, then turn off the anode and cathode. For the second way, I am not going to extract the parameters, hours and minutes, numerically and individually. So, from the entire clock data structure, I want to extract the text that represents the hours, colons, and minutes. So, for the code of the second way, I will declare a variable of type array of characters, with the name, buffer and inside the square brackets, I will place a size sufficient to fit the text that I want to extract, for example, a size of 10 characters. Then with the strf time function, I will save the extracted text in the buffer variable, placing four arguments inside the parentheses. The final variable, in this case buffer. The maximum size of said variable, in this case 10. The format to extract, 
that is, hours, colons, minutes, according to my need. And the time info structure, from which we are going to extract the data. Then, in a string type variable that I will call data, I will store the conversion to string of the buffer variable. I will place a control structure of the if type, the condition will be, if the variable data is equal to the text, 13, 2 points, 0, 5, which represents the exact time at which I want the LED to turn on. If the condition is met, we turn on the LED. If the condition is not met, then we turn off the LED. With this we finish the second way of doing the timing. However, you can only operate one at a time, since both do exactly the same, so, I will comment on the second, and I will load the code only with the first active form, you can choose the form that best suits your requirements. As the program time approaches, we see that the LED is off. When the time arrives, the LED will turn on. I will adjust the brightness a little to see it better. The LED will remain on while the clock shows 13 hours and 5 minutes. And when you go to minute 6, it will turn off. Well dear friends, I hope you enjoyed the video, greetings from Electronic Spot, see you in the next video.